Department of Justice, the Senate, the House of Representatives on one side, and the Solicitor General on the other. But the fact is, if only the NTC has said, had said to us from the outset that they could not give the network a provisional authority or that they would not allow ABS-CBN to broadcast after the expiration of their 25-year franchise, then we would have not relied on their word. And this piece of legislation that we are acting upon now may have been acted upon during that time. Ang Kongreso po, ang 18th Congress po ay solusyon na naghahanap ng problema. Hindi po tayo naghihintay na may problema, bibigyan natin ng solusyon. Hindi po. Wala pa po yung uh, problema, naghahanap na tayo ng solusyon. We are solutions looking for problems. That's why as early as February, we warned about COVID-19. And we asked the supporters of ABS-CBN na payagan nyo muna kaming maghanda. Eh, nung Marso nun nyo lang nakita na tama kami. That is a fact, not an opinion. It is a fact that they gave their word under oath before the Congress of the Philippines. It is a fact that the NTC said they will give a provisional authority. Mag-away po tayo sa mga opinion. Dito lang po, wala pa hong tatlong po ang kongresista na physically present. But uh, so far, ang gaganda ng attendance natin through Zoom, uh, teleconferencing, uh, may git dalawang daan, umabot ng tatlong daan. We can all have different opinions, but there cannot be more than uh, one true fact for one specific item, di ba? It's either true or false. And it is a fact that NTC made this statement under oath before the Congress of the Philippines. This destruction is the reason why we must not allow the betrayal of NTC and the unconstitutional mendling of the Solicitor General in this exclusive power of Congress to go unchallenged. Kung magsisinungaling lang sa atin ang mga ahensya at resource persons natin, paano tayo makakasiguro na tama ang ating mga aksyons? Kung yung pong may ibang opinion, e eh magbibigay ng sikretong uh, sulat sa mga nagtetestify sa atin at hindi ipapaalam sa atin, how can we come up with a national consensus? How can we inform our people so that they will be part of the decision? Their actions are not only an affront to this institution, it also delays the discussion and passage of crucial legislation that our people sorely need. Yes, there was some days that I did not speak about ABS-CBN. Why? Because we were talking about DSWD. We were talking about social amelioration. We were talking with the cabinet about the stimulus bill. We were talking about critical cons construction activities, including medical centers. Ano? Tatalikuran ko lahat ng trabaho ko? Papatayang ko ng telepono o mag exit ako sa Zoom para lang i-address lahat ng concerns tungkol sa ABS-CBN? Samantalang ang chairman naman natin ng franchise committee na si Congressman Alvarez ay napakagaling at sinasagot naman lahat ng issues. So frankly, today is really not the time for ABS-CBN. Ngunit dahil naalala ko yung, lali, la, yung laging sinasabi ng aking ama o ng tatay ko na si Rene Compañero Cayetano, he always reminded us that it is always the right time to do what is right. Then we will find the time today to do what is right. Because it was wrong for the government without notice, without due process, to stop the broadcasting of ABS-CBN, especially during this pandemic. We live in extraordinary times, but it is made even more exceptional by the pandemic that has permanently marked all of those who lived through it. Advances in online technologies even during the period of pre-COVID-19, were already growing by leaps and bounds, have made the free flow of information to happen at a dizzling pace. Old models of media, many of which we brought, we thought 
were permanent are now being complemented, sometimes even discarded, in favor of new ideas, new ways of doing things, better, faster, more efficient, more democratic. Mass communication, which has for the most of history been a one-way medium, is seeing the dawn of a new age where inter interactivity and interaction with the audience is no longer a novel gimmick. Dati po, kung may TV show, part po ng, hindi bang gimmick, pero part po ng uh, attraction nung palabas na yon. E meron uh, phone-in question. O kaya meron kang phone a friend. O kaya meron pwede mag-comment. Pero ngayon po, hindi na po ito isang gimmick. It is now a permanent, permanent part of our communication landscape. The fact that ABS-CBN is still able to broadcast its content even after its franchise had been uh, preemptorily terminated shows that this issue is not, nor has it ever been, about silencing media nor curtailing the freedom of the press. Just look at the social networking platforms and you will see that those freedoms are alive, well, and undeniably thriving in the Philippines. Wala po tayong binubusalsalan dito. We are simply following the law that every 25 years, you have to present before Congress your case of why we should give you another 25 years. And if some, many, or even one person complains, it is our duty to hear that complaint and then judge later on. In many ways, these changes reminded me of my dad, Senator Rene Compañero Caetano, and the lessons he taught me in life. My dad was old-fashioned, very strict. He taught us that, the di that discipline and hard work are primary virtues. But at the same time, he also saw the value in using technology to reach the people. His pioneering show, Compañero e Compañera, first on DZMM, then later on on ABS-CBN, provided a valuable public service to the Filipinos who may have otherwise not been able to see, let alone afford, a good lawyer. But in all this, one thing was higher above all. He always stood for what is right. Yung po ang spirit na nagdrive sa kanya, dun sa radyo na ipaglaban ang batas, na yung tama ay tama at yung mali ay mali. Regardless of how hard the times were, he always pounded into us, just do what is right. Even in my younger days as a politician, when I would give him analysis about politics before making a stand, he would get angry at me and I would say, just tell me what to do. Kau naman tatay ko. Sasagutin niya ako, hindi. Elected ka. Hindi ka sa akin sasagot. Sasagot ka sa taong bayan. So sabi ko, ibat ka nagagalit? Sabi niya, nagagalit ako kasi hindi mo iniisip ko ano tama yun ang gagawin mo eh. Iniisip mo ko ano popular eh. Iniisip mo ko ano yung, yung politics. That's where, you know, my mentality of politics together with my Christian belief changed my philosophy. And during those times when we would be too hard on us. He would be too hard on us. That is when my mother came in to comfort us and to encourage us. But every time akala namin kinakampihan na, na niya kami dahil sasabihin niya, ganyan talaga tatay mo, talagang sumisigaw yan, talagang madaling magalit, she would always come to his side by reinforcing the idea that tama is tama and mali is mali. I guess that's the teacher in my mom, to keep teaching her children and people who she proudly called her pupils to do what is right. This is the same spirit that drives me in my work today. Discipline, hard work, innovation, and doing what is right. It's not always easy. Sometimes we have to discern kung ano tama o mali. Sometimes there are two decisions na parehong tama. May mga iba that will argue there's such a thing as uh, least among all evils. But personally, I always try to find uh, what is right rather than the least of uh, two evils. 
So what is right? Or at least how to determine what is right? Is it not right to hear all sides before we pass judgment? Is it right to ensure that our constitutional freedoms are not just protected, but they are also strengthened? Is it right to prioritize the welfare of many over the interest of the few? Is it right to stand by your principle despite the criticism? Is it right to listen to that still, small, constant voice in your heart and mind telling you, eto tama, eto mali? Simply, is it right to do what is right? Before I continue to talk about what is right, what is the right thing to do about this issue, allow me first to address my comments to the following people or sectors. First, to the Solicitor General and the NTC, to be clear, we take no offense with your legal opinion. Pinapahalagaan namin ang opinion nyo. Even if it is contrary to the DOJ and both houses of Congress and to legal precedents. What we do object to and take serious offense with is the furtive manner by which you deliberately and maliciously undermine the authority of Congress. March 10, nagsalita na mabibigyan ng provisional authority. It was only on April 30 na sumulat ang soldier sa NTC. It was only May 3 that he made the threats to NTC public. And when the investigation takes place, we have evidence that there was collusion with some private individuals to steer up you know, uh, the basis for, for all of this. But the point is, Mr. Speaker, we can only act based on the best information we have. And when you come to Congress, especially if you are part of the government, we expect you to tell us the truth. And if you make a mistake or change your mind, we expect you to tell us right away so that we can remedy the situation. The NTC gave its testimony and commitment on March 10. If you had any objections, Mr. Solicitor General, why did you not communicate with Congress? Why choose to remain silent for close to two months and on the eve of the opening of Congress come out with your threats to the NTC? As a fellow lawyer and government worker, we should be working together and not trying to bring each other down. The media establishment, let me address this to you. Mga kapatid po natin sa media, I respect that you have a stand in calling for a hearing. Katulad po ng statement ng Senate media na mga kaibigan natin. I respect that you are calling us out for our failure to do this sooner. I even respect that some of you put the blame on me, on Alan Peter Cayetano personally. But when you blindly call for the approval of the franchise, without having heard all the sides of the story, then you show yourselves not as advocates of fair and balanced presentation of the facts, as is taught in all the schools that teach journalism, as journalists are sworn to, but you simply become plain and simple propagandists. Kung hiningi niyo po sa amin na maghiring at mag-action ka agad, nire-respeto namin yun. Pero hingi niyo sa amin, ipasa na lang namin, pikit mata. Eh, kayo ba, papayag kayong may isulat kayo o may broadcast kayo na hindi kayo nagpa-fact check? Kung ano na lang sabihin namin, yun na lang ilalabas niyo. ba? Hindi journalism yan. So, hindi po magiging tama ang decision ng Congress kung we will act speedily for the sake of acting speedily. And I cannot respect that. Do not weaponize this issue for your own personal agenda. This is a disservice to the very public in whose name you claim to stand for. Again po, hindi ko po sinasabing lahat. May iilan lang. There are bad apples everywhere. No? Wala naman pong uh, isang barrel na 100% unless you pick the apples one by one. So whether you talk about politicians, whether you talk about members of the police, whether you talk about 
uh, sa media, meron po talagang may personal agenda. Pero it's our lookout na wag magpadala sa kanila. Kasi alam naman natin kung anong tama. Some may say that they are in the service of the Filipino people. Pero sa gitna ng sakuna, gusto nyo, kayo ang unahin namin kaso sa kababayan natin. E kayo nga isang dahilan kung bakit may mga isyo ang network na ito eh. Sa mata ng marami, klarong bias at pakikialam sa eleksyon na bawal sa atin batas ang ginawa ninyo at ginamit nyo yung network na ito. 2004, 2010, 2016, 2019. Tapos tatakpan nyo yan by saying it is against press freedom. Hindi po natin nilalahat ang mga journalist. Ngunit tulad din ng pagpapakita ninyo na ang lahat ng politiko ay korap, na lahat ng polis ay abusado, damay-damay na ang buong institusyon sa maling gawain ng ito. So again, this may be a few bad eggs. But bakit po walang naging problema sa pagpasa ng franchise ng Channel 5? Bakit po walang naging problema sa pagpasa ng franchise ng Channel 7? Because wala pong tumayo at nagsabing nag-issues. If you take up, for example, Channel uh, 7, DCDD, no. Now and then, si Egan, very popular broadcaster, criticizes me. But I have full respect for him. That's his opinion. But I never complained to management. Nung dumadaan yung franchise, I did not tell uh, Channel 7 when I was in the Senate, boss, nakikialam kayo sa eleksyon. Why? It was simply his opinion as a journalist. And if it's correct, magbabago ako, and kung mali, di ba? Then I would tell him, I disagree with you. And he'd invite me again to his show. But that was not the case with ABS-CBN. And we deserve a hearing to be able to hear that. Yes, it might be unfair to Carlo Katikbak and Mark Lopez, the new management, because this happened uh, ju during another era. No? But they're asking for a extension. Eh. They, they want a new franchise that will let them continue their media empire. Thus, accountability. Kung may negosyo po ako, pero yung negosyo ko po na yun, may ginawang mali. E binili na po ni DS Ani uh, Rani Abu ang negosyo na yun. Pag hinabol po ng BIR, hindi lang ako ang hahabulin. Siya din. Siya na may ari nung ano na yun eh. Nung uh, negosyo na yun. So it might be unfair. Kung tinago ko sa yun, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker Abu, but you still have to face the consequences. So if the government is removing your license, you have to answer. No? And we have to see what are the reforms that you will put in place. Now, if the network is confident that mali, these are false accusations, misunderstandings, these are rumblings by some, many uh, of our kababayans, then let the people judge habang nagihiring po tayo. To the celebrities of ABS-CBN, yes, marami kayong fans dito sa Congress, but please be reminded that loyalty to the company that has given you a good life is important. But you cannot cry injustice and blame public servants when you lose your paycheck or your show, yet not take notice of the fact Yes, the fact that there are grave issues against your network. This include alleged violation, again, alleged violations of labor laws, tax laws, and even constitutional law, even election laws. By all means, let your voices of support for your network be heard. By all means, sabihin natin sa kababayan ang mga magandang nagawa ng network. But if you really want to join the public debate, find it in your heart. Find it in your indignation to also support due process and fact-finding as the issue is imbued with public interest, not just your interest. I understand it's hard for any employee to speak to against the company that it serves. But there are employees who are speaking out against ABS. And this is the only time that they will be listened to. 
every time na may 25-year franchise renewal, doon lang pinapakinggan eh. Uh, yes, you have the, the courts, you have the labor arbiters, but how long does that take? And if it shows a pattern, hindi naman magdi-decide ang labor arbiter about that eh. Di ba? Yung social justice po, kasama po yan sa franchise. Kasi public utilities po ito. Some of my colleagues, some lang po to. Yes, this bill is important. No question about that. But it is, but is it so important that you would lose all sense of objectivity and propriety? Again, ha? is it so important that you will lose all sense of objectivity and propriety? How dare you belittle the tremendous work this Congress has done in the past 10 months? Shame on you for insulting your own house and colleagues and calling your colleagues inutil and tamad. Despite having passed the 2020 General Appropriations Act, the Bayanihan to Heal Us Act, uh, as one act, postponing the 2020 Barangay and Sangguniaan Kabataan elections, without, which turned out to be the right thing to do. Imagine kung mag election tayo during these times. The law for establishment of Malasakit Center, increasing and restructuring excise tax rates on alcohol, heated tobacco, and vapor products, that are now helping our government coffers and helping the health sector. Corporate Income Tax and Incentive Ratification, Rationalization Act, CITIRA, the Passive Income and Financial Intermediary Taxation Act, PIFITA, the creation of the Department of Filipino Overseas and Foreign Employment, the Real Property Valuation and Assessment Act, the creation of the National Academy for Sports, the Salary Standardization of 2019, Extending the 2019 budget to include the teachers and nurses and other things. Which, by way, eight of these ten that I have mentioned are part of the legislative priorities announced by the President nung 2019 SONA. And kung sino pa itong isa, dalawa o tatlo na tinawag tayong tamad at inutil, hindi ba kayo naman ang nagsasabing bukas na lang yan? Hindi ko pa nabasa yung bill na yan. I need a day more. Wag muna yung malasakit center next week na yan. Wag muna yung Department of Overseas next week na yan. Ngayon na kami nagsasabi na mas importante ang COVID-19 at paano natin i-defeat. Now na we're saying that feeding the people is more important, sasabihin nyo sa amin, forget everything, forget due process, and in one instance, ipasa na lang yung 25-year franchise. Let the people judge. Sino sa atin ang nagsasabi ng totoo at sino ang tama? To the senators, allow us to do our jobs. Remember, it is always easier to get 24 people to agree than for 300. Remember, we represent specific constituencies and sectors. And that is why the Constitution provides that franchise bills, like appropriations bills, will emanate from the House. But franchise bills enjoy the constitutional prerogative of exclusively emanating from the House. So we respect your work. But iba pananaw natin eh. National yung sa inyo. Sa amin may national. Pero nasa grassroots kami. Tinetext kami, pinupuntahan kami sa bahay, sa district office ng mga constituents namin. We want to work with you. We have to work with you. We've done great things together with you, our dear senators. We have to build our nation, but respect our timing and the manner of us holding our hearings. In other words, words let's all play nice. Let's not just pretend to be nice to each other. Sa mga dilawan, nothing I say will make you agree with me. You don't even agree on the facts. Simply because you think your opinions are law and are always correct. Former Senator Trilanias and you deserve each other. Kayo na lang mag-usap. Pero konting advice and take it from me. Don't disagree with him. Papatayang kayo ng mic. Sa mga DDS o diehard Duterte supporters, I know you want to shut down ABS-CBN. Believe me when I say I hear you. 
Many in this August Hall hear you. Congress hears you. As a friend and political ally of the President, part of the purpose of having this hearing is to make sure that history will judge our actions as just. Na may justicia po. And that the world will not blame the Duterte administration in case, in case, the franchise application is denied. So it's only by having these hearings where we will be able to justify to our people now and where history can look back and say, tama pala na binigay niyo yung franchise in 25 years. Or mali pala, dapat pala hindi niyo binigyan. O tama pala na hindi niyo binigyan. Or maybe some amendments to it, depending on what we find out during the hearings. I was the one who filed the, temporary, the application for a temporary restraining order and spoke against ABS-CBN during those crucial moments before the 2016 elections. I have not wavered that the network has to be held accountable. But true accountability can only flow from fair and thorough hearings. Di po tayo pwede mag road rage dito. Kahit mali po yung kotse na nag-cut sa'yo, pag hinabol mo, kinat mo rin, nilabasan mo ng barel, ginulpi mo, mali ka pa rin. Di ba? May traffic enforcer at may meron pong paraan ang traffic enforcer na interviewin to get due process from, from all of them. So allow our majority leader, allow the House leadership na mag-traffic kung anong mas mahalaga sa panahon na ito. But again, without any injustice to anyone. Lastly, to the management and employees of ABS-CBN, alam po namin na sa panahon ng COVID, marami po ang umaasa sa balita ng ABS-CBN. At kahit naman may iba pang stasyon, may mga bahagi pa rin ng Pilipinas na inaabot lang ng isang network ng ABS-CBN. Wala naman siguradong makakatanggi na tumutulong ang ABS-CBN sa efforts ng local at national government. Kabilang sa DOH, IATF, DILG at iba pang ahensya ng gobyerno at local government units, tumutulong ang ABS-CBN upang maibsan ang epekto ng COVID-19. That goes the same with the other calamities. Nandito po si Majority Leader Martin Romaldez. Ted Filon is in the building. ABS-CBN was there during Yolanda and helped rebuild. We also know that ABS-CBN was there when yung lugar po ni D.S. Rani uh, Abu, ang lugar po ng ating mga kababayang Batanggenyo, was ravaged by the explosion of Taal. So, hindi, hindi po namin tinatanggal yan sa network nyo. Hindi lang sa panahon ito, kung hindi sa iba pang mga sakuna at trahedya ng mga nagdaan taon. Nandun po kayo. Ngunit sa kabila ng lahat ng ito, kailangan pa ding sagutin ang mga katanungan ng mga tao. Ang konstitusyon sinasabi na kailangan ng renewal ng franchise. And this is the time to, to ask the questions. There is no question that you have been part of nation building, part of the Philippine history, part of who we are today. But as you yourself have said through your officers, you are not perfect. You are not a perfect network. And I agree. Why do I agree? Wala naman pong perfecto talaga, just lang. No one is perfect. And that is why we need these hearings. If it is done properly, we will emerge stronger and unified, having laid to rest one of the most politically charged issues of our time. But to do this, we need everyone's cooperation, understanding, and open-mindedness. You know, the most politically charged issue during the time of creation and paradise was Adam and Eve partaking of the forbidden fruit. Di po ba? Kung meron media po nun, yun po ang headline. Eba, kinaan yung mansanas, binigay kay Adan. Di ba? Hindi ko alam paano i-feature yung ahas dun. But what did the Lord do who is all-knowing? Sinabi ba niya, I condemn you? Sinabi ba sa inyo, mali, etc.? Hindi ba nagtanong muna siya, Adam and Eve, what did you do? Why are you hiding? Why are you ashamed? 
So is it too much to ask that you give Congress the opportunity to do the same? To ask all sides, ano ba ang tamang ginawa ng ABS? Why should we give them another 25 years? Ano naman ang mali nila na dapat tanggalin natin sa kanila? Paano naman empleyado nila? Paano ang investments nila over the last 25 years? Totoo bang nakialam sa eleksyon o hindi? Importante ang freedom of press. Pero hindi ba importante din na ang eleksyon natin is free and fair? Na kahit sinong Pilipino, may pera man o wala, may equal chance? Pero if you only have two giant networks in our country and 95% of our people watch your news and you can sway who they, you want them to vote for by just using one network, isn't that as much a threat to democracy as damaging the freedom of the press or freedom of speech? I echo the words of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte when he tells you, ABS-CBN, and also all the members of media, simply do your job. Do not fear, do your job. Call out injustice and corruption whenever you see it. Protect the weak from the powerful and give voice to the voiceless. This is your mandate. Kahit dito sa Kongreso, kung anong mali ang gagawin dito, i-report nyo. To speak truth freely and fearlessly to power. But beware, yes, beware, that you do not become the power that you hope to check. Huwag nyo rin po i-underestimate ang power ninyo. Because kapag ka ginamit nyo yung network para sa injustice, multiplied to a million times over, walang laban din po ang biktima ng injustice sa inyo. Magkamali lang kayo sa news eh, sa pangalan o yung bahay. Sira na reputasyon ng isang tao. Hindi na madaling ibalik yun. Some of your reporters, and let me emphasize again, some, some reporters or in the newsroom of ABS-CBN repeatedly say, di ba sabi mo, ikaw mismo ang mag on ng transmitter kung sa pilitan isasara ang istasyon. Yes po, I said that right outside this hall. I said it based, of course, on the premise and on the promise of NTC and on my consultations na hindi isasara. But I did say it, na pagka pinatay, ako mismo mag -on. Pero ang sagot ko sa hamon nyo, hindi ba voluntarily pinatay nyo yung transmitter nyo? Wala pa naman nag enforce dun eh. Pwede naman kayo pumunta sa korte. Pwede kayong humingi ng uh, temporary restraining order habang nagro-broadcast pa kayo. Notice pa lang na sa inyo, order. If the order is illegal, padalan mo ako order sa bahay na lumayas ako sa bahay ko. Eh, alam kong bahay ko yon. Pupunta ako sa korte, hindi ako voluntary alis sa bahay. But I respect yung discarte nyo. Yan ang, yan ang naging strategy, yun ang decision nyo. Maybe you wanted to humble yourself before the law. Maybe gusto nyo magpaawa. Hindi, hindi ko alam. But I respect your decision. But kayo sa, sa ilan lang naman, na paulit-ulit plineplay, sinasabi, eh sabi mo, i-on mo eh. Paano ko i-on eh? Kayo nagpatay. Pero ngayon, sa araw na to, para wala na tayong pagtalunan, para matapos na yung usapan, we will begin the process of turning on your transmitter by giving you a franchise until October 31, 2020. And we will not pass the buck. We will have the hearing. Tatapusin namin to at tao ang magja-judge kung dapat kayo bigyan o hindi ng prangkisa. Through this measure that we have filed today, I am now sponsoring, we will provide ABS with a provisional franchise or with a franchise a full-blooded franchise with limited period until October 31, 2020, within which both the House of Representatives and the Senate will hear the issues being raised for and against the renewal and assess with complete impartiality and fairness whether or not the network shall be granted a franchise for another 25 years. We cannot, in good conscience, sweep the accusation under the rug and proceed as if nothing happened. As we have always promised, these hearings will be fair, impartial, and above all, thorough. Again, mga kababayan, ang issue po ng Kongreso 
timing lang po at fairness. Timing po. I was not willing to sacrifice the budget, the relief sa taal, the relief that was going on sa tinamaan po ng mga um, lindol sa, sa Mindanao. I was not willing to sacrifice po yung much-needed taxes na it ends up we needed it much more than we thought before because of this COVID-19. No? So timing and also fairness. Diba? Hindi naman po pwede pong i-grant o wag i-grant nang hindi natin pinapakinggan lahat. Whatever the outcome of these hearings will be, there will be reforms. There must be not just a new but a better normal. Not only for ABS-CBN but for the entire media industry. And not only for the media but for us public servants. Kahit po dito tayo sa Kongreso, there has to be reforms. Crisis brings out the best and worst in people. But as Filipinos, I ask each one of you, can't we talk about what we believe in without bringing others down? Kailangan ba natin mag-insultuhan? Kailangan ba natin mag-alaskahan? Kailangan ba natin tawagin ang ibang tao na tanga o bobo? Can't we lift each other up with our with and in our debates? At this time of great peril when the whole world is on the brink, it is really too much to ask that we hold off on the discussion of this issue and issues that are divisive, at least until we're able to take care of each other. So let me make it clear. Baka sabihin ng iba, eh, pagkatapos mong sabihin XYZ about many people, sabihin mo, let's lift each other up. No, I recognize that every time we're put in a situation that very divisive ang ating issue, Let's talk today about death penalty. Hindi tayo magiging divided. Let's talk today about divorce. Let's talk about abortion. Let's talk about constitutional change, federalism, which I very much believe in. Hindi mo magiging divisive. So ang sinasabi ko po, iwasan po natin ang pwedeng iwasan na divisive so we can take care of each other para hindi mapusok ang ating kalooban para naman po Okay lang sana, alaskahan eh. Let's make each other laugh. Di ba? Pero yung mag-insultuhan po tayo, panoorin nyo po ang ibang bansa. US, Spain, Italy, China, sa nangyayari. Hindi ba bawat galaw nila, pati politika nila? Look at the US for example. And this is my personal opinion. And I have great respect for the American system. But right before COVID, nag impeachment sila. So imagine that time na imbis na nag impeachment nag-uusap sila Republican at Democrats, Presidente at Congress, how to deal with COVID, they'd be in a much better place. So I don't want to look back in history and say, you know what, dahil popular sa ganito, binigay na lang namin yung 25 years. Or I don't want to say, because sila naman talaga may kasalanan, wag na natin ibigay. And then we look back in history and say, this could have been the time that we got united. Because even EDSA 1, 2, even if you include EDSA 3, there was people power, but we were not united. It's more that there was more, there was a majority opinion over a minority opinion. Can we not now come up with a consensus? A consensus so that we can move in leaps and bounds and take care of our people. Some say that politics is the art of getting and doing what is popular. Some say it is the science of avoiding what is difficult. The 18th Congress says to our people today that politics is the commitment to doing what is right. And definitely now more than ever, we have to do what is right for our people, for our nation. God bless Congress. God bless the Philippines. Salamat sa ating mga colleagues. Mr. Floor Leader. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move that we recognize the uh, gentleman from Laguna and Deputy Speaker Dan S. Fernandez to deliver a sponsorship speech. The best boss, the best. Chair recognizes Deputy Speaker Congressman Dan speaker. Fernandez from Laguna to sponsor the said measure. Please proceed, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues. Uh, speaker Alan uh, Peter Kiatano, thank you so much for that wonderful uh, sponsorship and uh, for giving the uh, 18th Congress 
the opportunity uh, to be a part of this uh, of this bill, House Bill Number 6732, granting the ABS-CBN a franchise to uh, construct, install, operate, and maintain television and radio broadcasting uh, stations in the Philippines. It is the right thing to do. We've been through a lot of trials indeed in the Philippines. Absorb a lot of problems, including the eruption of Taal. As what the speaker have said a while ago, the different typhoons, the different calamities, and now the COVID-19 pandemic. ABS-CBN had been a part for millions of Filipinos. And not negating to the wish of the majority of our representatives during the committee hearing, with no less than the NTC chairman, Chairman Cordoba, who attended the said uh, hearing and telling us that a provisional franchise will be issued by them and thereby continuing the airing of ABS-CBN while we in Congress are working to fight first the effect of this pandemic. But hold and behold, we were deceived. And a cease and desist order was issued and ABS-CBN shut down its operations. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, this bill will somehow give the 18th Congress time to deliberate much extensively and comprehensively the issues about the ABS-CBN. This bill will give all sides to air their inputs and give chance for each and every one of us to decide the fate of the renewal of the ABS-CBN franchise. This representation joins the House of Representatives in this important move to grant ABS-CBN a provisional franchise that will be valid until October 31, 2020. Our people need and have the right to access to all possible reliable sources of information, particularly this time, when we are battling this COVID-19 pandemic, ABS-CBN will continue such a source. We cannot afford to deny our people this source that is already familiar to them. This provisional franchise will give the time to this House to process ABS-CBN's application for its franchise renewal. We will hear all stakeholders on the issue so the House is properly guided in making its decision. This is the correct process that we have always followed and will continue to follow. But, Mr. Speaker, at the same time, I would like to take this opportunity to make the National Telecommunication Commission accountable for its action, which to this representation clearly constitutes contempt of this house. The LTC's issuance of cease and desist order against ABS-CBN despite the agreement reached with the leadership of this house that it will issue a provisional authority to the network while the bill is being processed by Congress betrays not only the interest of this house but more importantly the Filipino people's greater interest and well-being. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, let us move to also make NTC accountable for its action. The Filipino people deserve no less. Grant ABS-CBN a provisional franchise, but also make NTC accountable. Maraming salamat po. Aprobahan na po natin ang HB 6732. Hindi bukas, hindi sa susunod na linggo. Kundi ngayon, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat po. Floor Leader. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve House Bill Number 6732 under in the Committee of the Whole. So moved, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Chairman. There's a motion to approve House Bill Number 6732. As many in favor of the House Bill Number 6732, please say aye. As many are against, please say nay. The ayes have it. House Bill Number 6732 is approved.
Mr. Speaker, I move that the Secretariat be directed to prepare the report for, of the committee of the whole on House Bill Number 6732 and thereafter distribute the copies of the said report to all the members, including those who are in the teleconference. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The Secretariat is directed to prepare the report of the committee of the whole and thereafter distribute copies of the said report to all members. Floor Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move to suspend session to allow our Secretary to prepare for the report. The so meeting is suspended. Servins, uh, ito po talaga ang uh, isa sa adhikain ng ating gobyerno no? na magkaroon po tayo ng mga pasilidad na ganito para mailagak po natin ang mga taong may suspetsya na tayo na may COVID o di kaya ay positibo na sa COVID-19. At katulad ng sabi ni Servins, ang mga taong hindi pa natitest for COVID-19 dapat sa isang isolation facility na may sariling kwarto at may sariling banyo at yun naman pong na-test na at nakita na natin na positibo sila, ngunit mild and asymptomatic, maaari naman sa ating quarantine facilities. Sir Vince, ito po bang mga isolation facilities? Kailangan po ba ng requirements dyan? Ano po ba ang dapat isaalang-alang ng ating mga kababayan bago sila makadiretsyo dito sa isolation facilities natin? Sir Vince? You say, Chris, I'm sorry. I, I, medyo nawaga po kayo. Sorry. Yes, sir. Sir, tanong po lang natin kung ano po ba yung mga may requirements po ba ang ating mga kababayan para sila ay ma-admit dito sa isolation facilities natin? Um, Unang-una po, no, para maintindihan po ng ating mga kababayan, unang-una po, hindi po pwedeng mag-walk in sa mga facilities na ito, no? Para po maintindihan natin lahat, no? Hindi po pwedeng mag-walk in. Kailangan po ay ang uh, mga pasyente na i-admit dito ay dadaan sa mga city health.